Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen from Player Attack. I'm here with Brian Allgaier from Insomniac Games, and we are talking about all things Fuse. What is Fuse? How does it work? Tell, tell us about this four-person, as you say, a competitive uh, squad action thing. Sure. Uh, Fuse is an alien substance that powers a lot of these crazy weapons. Uh, there's a team of four operatives that have gone to this uh, government facility at the start of the game, and they learn about these crazy prototype weapons that the government's messing around with. Uh, Fuse is this alien substance that combines with normal materials and creates these devastating results. So, you know, for instance, uh, J Jacob Kimball's got this weapon called the Arc Shot, and it combines fuse and liquid mercury. And combined, it creates these fiery wisps that you know, burn enemies and do all sorts of crazy stuff. Because, of course, liquid mercury, you know, it's a common household right, you know, yeah. product. I, I have a whole bunch of it. I have vats of it at home. You know. But so, you know, essentially, uh, each one of our agents has their own unique weapons, which has its unique ability, which really divides the uh, characters up into separate classes. So Naya Devereaux uses another common item called antimatter, mixed with fuse, of course. And uh, that allows her to create these black holes and go invisible. So she can fire it out, uh, these, this mixture out into the environment and create multiple black holes, which will just vaporize enemies. But then she also gets a fuse upgrade that allows her to go invisible, and she can flank enemies and take them out that way. And that makes her the stealth class of the group. Because the thing is, you're saying Naya Devereaux, and, and she's a lady. Izzy is also a lady. So I'd, as a girl, it's, it's quite refreshing to see that there are you know, two women and two men in this group. Why, why is the girl the healer class? Yeah, it just kind of worked out that way. I mean, we weren't actually specifically saying, oh, girls tend to be more nurturing and supportive. <laughs> and, and, you know, but what we found was that uh, she had a great offensive weapon, which was a shatter gun, and that um, allows her to crystallize enemies and blow them up. And we thought, well, what's a more defensive ability she could have? And it turned out healing worked out really well for her. <laughs> so she can either heal people or she can just blow them into 100 million tiny bits. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think that's a fairly feminine trait to have, really. Well, I don't, no, no comments. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us about the other uh, couple of classes or the other couple of characters that are in the game as well? Yeah, the other one that I had mentioned was Dalton Brooks, and he's got the mag shield, and that allows him to create this energy barrier, and it's, again, another common element, which is ferrofluids combined with fuse, and that allows him to bring this shield up, which protects him and his team from bullets. It also builds up kinetic energy, which um, lets him blast enemies apart. And so it really works well as both a defensive and offensive weapon. So there are four characters. You don't only have to play this with, with four people. You're not actually in any sort of, there's no detriment to playing this one by yourself because you can jump between characters. That's right. In a lot of campaigns, you choose a character, you're stuck with them, you have to start a whole new game if you want to pick a different character. With Fuse, you can um, essentially leap between any hero at any time. And uh, it's really um, helpful in making strategic choices. So as you progress each one of your characters, you may say, this is my character who's great for close range combat, but I'm going to rely on you know, Jacob, for instance, who has the arc shot for long range. So, that way, you know, depending on what the situation is, you can just leap to that other character and use them. And it works out really well. And it works in both single player, if you're playing by yourself, and three other bots. And it also works if you're playing with friends. And as long as there's like a sing at least one AI bot available, you can jump into that character. So you don't have to you know, have one person who has to be the dedicated healer class. You could all be playing your, your little offensive stuff and then go, oh, hang on, we need a healer. All right, I'll go you know, jump into Izzy for a while. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people that play four-player cooperative games, but then there's also people who play um, two players, and then there's always those two other classes that you can jump into. So it creates a lot, of more, a lot more choices for people as you play. Why did you keep it so very, very quiet for 18 months? Well, developing a new IP is no easy task, and we've learned this from Ratchet and Clank and Resistance. Uh, with Ratchet and Clank, it started out with uh, a girl and a stick, and it turned into this alien with a wrench. So that's the one thing that's happened is just the game's been evolving. And it's gotten to a point where we're ready to really show it to everyone. And we're excited about our two big modes, which of course is our Fuse campaign mode and the new one we're revealing today, Echelon. 
So we've had a little bit of a sneaky peek at Echelon just a, a few moments ago. Can you tell us, for, for people who haven't been able to quite catch up with the news yet, what is Echelon, how does it work, what's the cool stuff about it? Sure, uh, Echelon is um, a competitive mode, <laughs> and essentially it's cooperative, but there's a level of competition with it. And it's a uh, wave-based, fast-paced mode that's a lot li li like the classic game Smash TV. And you play 12 rounds, and the rounds are randomized, uh, except for the sixth round and the last round. So at the sixth round, you encounter a mini boss, and uh, the final round, you encounter uh, one of our major bosses, like an enforcer or a uh, whistler. Uh, so we did this because we wanted there to be a level of structure, but at the same time, every match is somewhat unpredictable. So Fuse has been in the works now for what feels like ages. So, and now that you're finally talking about it, it must be fairly close to completion. Yeah, you know, we're wrapping things up right now. The team's really hard at work. Uh, fortunately, a lot of the creative elements are out of the way, and we're just tuning and making the game more fun. So uh, the game is set to be released in Australia in uh, late fall um, 2013. Fantastic, and it's for uh, the, the three major current consoles? It's going to be Xbox and PlayStation 3. And that's a big thing for Insomniac because we have made uh, games for Sony and uh, just for the PlayStation. So now we're excited about reaching a much bigger audience <laughs> of Xbox players. What's it like developing for a whole different platform? It's really cool. I mean, we're, you know, we have a lot of great loyal fans and a lot of people who are uh, PlayStation fans um, are fine with it. And as long as we make a, a great experience on both consoles, I think everyone will be happy, which is the, is the plan. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jess.